In this video, we are going to see how to do parsing using the LR parsing algorithm. And this LR parsing algorithm is common for all the LR parsing, whether so it is LR0 or it is LR1. So we have SLR also, which is simple LR. So first of all, let us look at whether if, for example, this is a given grammar and if we take a given string, then how to parse that given string using this uh, LR parsing algorithm and this is the LR parser. Okay. And we'll see step by step how the LR parser is parsing. You can read the algorithm here. It is saying, let S be the top of the stack and A is a lookahead symbol. Now, if action S comma A is SI, that is if it is a shift move, then shift A and I increment the input pointer. If action is a reduce move, then reduce to that particular production and pop two into length of the right hand side symbols and replace by alpha. If action is accept then successful parsing, if action is blank, that means there is an error. So let us look at this. Assuming that we want to parse the string a, a, b, b, dollar. Okay. And uh, this is a, a, b, b. And this is the number of the one, two and three. Okay. Now I'll break down this everything into step by step, simple steps so that you will be able to understand how things are working here. So when I'm saying breaking down to simple steps, that means I'm going to show the same stack, but in multiple, st multiple steps. Okay. So that we'll be able to understand what is going on here. So initially inside the stack will be having zero and zero is representing the start state that is I naught initial start state. Now from this string, read out the first symbol. The first symbol is a. So we'll put this a and we'll see what is zero on a. That means if on the start state zero, if you see a symbol a, then on which state you are going. So check this parsing table and you see on the start state, uh, no zero. If you see a symbol a, then you are going to shift to the state three. That means you go to state three I three. So that is shift three. And whenever we have a shift move, you can see in the uh, line, uh, line one is saying whenever we have a shift move, that means I'm going to put that shift move I inside the stack and I'm going to increment the input pointer. So we have A, A, B, B and dollar. That means now we are reading this symbol and the content of stack is like this 0, A, 3. Now the next symbol is A and the top of the stack is containing 3. What is 3 on A? 3 on capital A, uh, 3 on A is shift 3 again. That means I'm going to shift 3 here and I'm going to increment the input pointer. So we'll be reading the symbol B. So we have A, A, B, B, dollar. And now we are reading the symbol B and the top of stack is containing 3. That is 0, A, 3, A, 3. And now we are reading the symbol B. So what is 3 on B? 3 on B is shift 4. 3 on B is shift 4. Okay. So again, we are going to put 4 here and we are going to increment this input pointer to this B. So now the stack is containing uh, the f now, now we are reading this next symbol, which is B. So we have A, A, B, B dollar. We are reading the symbol B and the top of stack is containing 4. So we have 0, A, 3, a 3 b and 4 and next symbol is b now what is 4 on b 4 on b is reduce 3 now remember this carefully we have a reduce move here reduce move means i, I can reduce this last symbol to that particular production right you can see this is a reduced to 3 now go to production number 3 and you can see production number 3 is a derives b that means if you are reading this b and so I'm reducing this previous symbol to production number three, that is A. And you can see what is the length of the right hand side here. Length of right hand side is one. So we are going to replace two into one, that is two symbols out of the stack. So I'm going to pop these two symbols, that is uh, out of the stack. Okay. So three, B, four. So because of this, I'm going to pop these two symbols out of the stack. And I'm going to put this capital A, this left hand side, that is capital A inside the stack. So we'll be having the following content onto the stack 0, A, 3, A, 3, and we have capital A. So what is capital A on 3? Capital A 
on 3 is 6 so I'm going to put 6 and remember one thing whenever a shift move that means we are going to increment the input pointer but if we get a reduce move that means we are not going to increment the input pointer in the reduce move okay so currently we are reading the symbol which is B here so I have not incremented the input pointer now check what is B on 6 so I'm checking this uh, symbol 6 I'm checking this 6 and I have B so check what is B on 6 B on 6 is reduced to production number 2 reduced to production number 2 and the production number 2 is A derives A that means I'm going to reduce this symbol and this A onto this uh, as this capital A and the length of the right hand side is 2 so I'm going to replace 2 into 2 there is 2 into the length of right hand side symbols out of the stack so I'm going to pop uh, this uh, four symbols out of the stack so after popping the four symbols we'll be having we are going to pop these four symbols and we have to push the left hand side the left hand side is capital A so we'll be pushing these four symbols that is 0 a 3 and capital A again when we get a capital A so we have to check what is capital A on 3 capital A on 3 is 6 so we are going to push 6 and because it was a reduced move so we are not going to increment the input pointer again we are reading b so again check what is b on 6 b on 6 is again reduced to production number 2 that means reduced to production number 2 is we are going to uh, take this a and we are going to take this production number a and going to reduce it to uh, this capital a and this is production number 2 so uh, the length of production number 2 is 4 so I'm going to pop 4 symbols out of the stack so this 1, 2, 3 and 4 these 4 symbols will be popped out after this we'll be having 0 here and after popping these 4 symbols we have to write the left hand side there is capital A and what is 0 on capital A it is 2 so I'm going to write 2 here and because it was a reduced move that is why I'm not going to uh, increment the input pointer so we are still reading b again check what is b on 2 what is b on 2 that is a shift 4 so that means i'm going to put b here i'm going to shift 4 here b and 4 and because it was a shift move so so that i'm going to increment the input pointer to dollar okay now we are reading dollar and the top of stack is containing 4 check what is 4 on dollar that is reduced to production number 3 and the production number 3 is saying it is a derives b a derives b means i'm going to replace this b with capital a okay so if a derives b b with capital a and the left uh, and the left hand side is containing ones is of right hand sides of length one so i'm going to replace two into one there is two symbols out of the stack so these two symbols will be replaced and th we have to put the left hand side that is capital a so we are getting zero a two a and what is 2 on a 2 on a is 5 again check what is dollar on 5 because it was a reduced move so i'm not going to increment the input pointer so 2 on 5 uh, so dollar on 5 dollar uh, okay fine so again there's a dollar here and dollar on 5 dollar on 5 is reduced to production number 1 that means i'm going to reduce this symbol and this symbol to single a so because the length of the right hand side is 4 so I'm going to pop 4 symbols out of the stack so I'm going to put the uh, left hand side that is I'm going to get 0 on A and 0 on A is 0 on capital A is 2 again the next symbol is dollar and the top of stack is containing 2 what is dollar on 2 dollar on 2 shift 4 shift 4 means uh, okay so this is A and sorry this is s this is the start symbol this is not a on two this is so this is small mistake here this is uh zero and s and uh, because zero and s is going to give us one and because this is one and one on dollar is except so one on dollar is except that is why you can see the following string can be passed from this given grammar so this is s actually this is not a this is s okay so uh, here in this case you can see this is lr0 parser and it will find the errors later 
we find some error which would detect later so whenever we go to any of the blank entries they always correspond to errors for example here we have blank entries these whenever we hit a blank entry here that means there is some error during the parsing so in any of these parsing tables blank entries always corresponds to errors okay so here how this is how you can parse a given string using lr parsing algorithms okay uh, now let us look at the next algorithm that is slr uh, 